Good morning, everyone. It's Tom and welcome to episode six. I'm in Tallinn, Estonia. And finally, the sun has come out. It heard my prayers last night because I want to go around. I've got the whole day today to see Tallinn and its beautiful architecture. And I was really, really hoping for the sun to come out so that all of my pictures and footage are going to look amazing for you guys because the buildings are amazing. So thank you if you've reached episode six. If you haven't watched episodes one to there's a link popping up on your screen now. I'm doing a 9 to 10 day trip around the Baltic countries and Finland. So I hope you get to see all my episodes there. I did talk about my first impressions tell in on yesterday's episode, episode 5. So do check it out if you missed out. But today we're going to have the whole day to explore, understand and learn more about Estonian culture. And we're going to start that off with a free walking tour in Old Town Tallinn. I love these free walking tours. It's basically a 90 minute to two hour crash course all about Estonian culture and what's to find and see in Tallinn. So we're going to head down there. It's going to start in about 25 minutes from now and we're going to catch a tour and spend the rest of the day exploring, sightseeing and also tasting <laughs> some yummy Estonian food too. So let's get down to Old City. <laughs> So I've just finished the free walking tour, which is always amazing. I love just getting that quick crash course for the city I'm in. And I learned so much about Tallinn and Estonia in general, which is really nice. Now, if you're planning to do this here in Tallinn, just type in Tallinn free walking tour on Google Maps and it'll pop up right there on the map. That's the meeting point. So make sure you head down there. All year round is at 12 o'clock noon or lunchtime. But during the peak season, which is the summertime from April till September, they've added extra tours at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. So during the summertime, there's three tours, 10, 12, and 3. And every other time, it's at lunchtime at 12. Basically 90 minutes to two hours. Make sure you've got really comfy shoes on. You'll be finished just before lunchtime. Also, don't forget to give a tip. They're very, very nice and take time out of their day to do the free walking tours for the tourists that come over. So don't hesitate to give a tip to the tour guide at the end of the tour. Now, as you saw on my video, there's a ton of tourists here and when I was looking off into the distance at a really nice vantage point that, I, that we were at I saw a couple of cruise ships now I've been in a couple of cruise ships and I know that there's about two up to five thousand people on each ship and that's what it feels like it feels like there's five thousand people all condensed in the whole city today so I'm not quite lucky with regards to that but from being on a few cruises myself I know that they need to get 
back on that cruise ship by 1, 2, 3 p.m. So I decided to grab a quick iced cap, chill out a bit, do some research on where to go. Sun sets really late, around 10 p.m. anyway, and the sun's out. So I'm going to wait for the tourists to thin out, and then we'll start sightseeing around Tallinn so I can really show you in a more comfortable way how Tallinn Estonia is like. So let me finish my iced cap and we'll start sightseeing around Old City. So right behind me is Viru Gate, which is one of the main entrances into Tallinn Old City. So I went through the tour earlier today and now we're going to go through and look at everything more closely. So I've got about six to eight different things that we can look at and I can't wait to show you guys. So let's get on to our first landmark here in Tallinn Old City. Parliament of Estonia. Where in the world have you seen a pink parliament building? Well, it's right here in Tallinn. As you can see behind me, they have a pink parliament building where they meet to make very important decisions for the country. But I just love the color. It's kind of like a pink pastel. So right opposite here is what I'm going to go inside because we can't go inside the parliament building. I'm sorry about that. But right in front of me, well behind me now, is the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral. This is one of the most iconic landmarks here in Tallinn. I can't wait to go inside because this looks absolutely beautiful. Now this was made in the period of 1894 to 1900 when the country was still in the Russian Empire. So this is what they left here for Estonia. So let's take a closer look at the Alexander Nevsky Cathedral. Let's go. Okay, so sorry I couldn't show you anything inside the cathedral because it's banned. You can't take pictures, you can't take videos. So out of respect, of course, we need to follow those house rules, but definitely a must to go inside. It looks completely like it stayed back in the era of the early 1900s. So that was really, really cool. Let's go on to the next church. City of churches, I guess. <laughs> So the next church, well, we're here on Tumpea Hill. And right on top of here is the oldest church in the whole of Tallinn and maybe Estonia. It's St. Mary's Cathedral. And it was actually established by the Danes when they were here. 13th century medieval church. Let's check it out. There's a bell tower on the top. I can see it right there. So let's take a close look at St. Mary's Cathedral. <laughs> Okay, so St. Mary's Cathedral, two euros to go inside, just the general admission, and five if you want to go up to the bell tower to see some views of the city, and that's what I did, five euros to go up. Make sure you're fit. 
the spiral staircase to go up to the top. It's about six or seven flights of stairs. I exercise regularly and I'm still kind of catching my breath right now. I'm just gonna take a one minute break and I've still got another two floors to go up right behind me on this wooden staircase just to check the views of St. Mary's Cathedral from St. Mary's Cathedral of Tallinn Old City. So let's go. for an amazing view of Tallinn and Tallinn Old City. It's right here at Patkuli Viewing Platform. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Patkuli? <laughs> Patkuli Viewing Platform. So here there's a restaurant, there's a cafe, you can get a bite to eat, souvenirs, and you can kind of get a half view of Tallinn Old City. I'm gonna show you right now. I'm so happy that half of the tourists have cleared out, so I've got a bit of space to show you the full view of Tallinn Old City. So let's take a closer look. the outer rim of the old city of Tallinn and I've just got to say these city walls that were made in I think the 1200s they are still pretty much intact for most of it I think it runs for about 1.8 to 2 kilometers and it goes all the way around and I just have to touch it it is absolutely amazing just looking at it, medieval period, how long ago it was made. It's such a beautiful sight and I'm so lucky that I'm here to show you guys this. Let's go on to our next place. I'm right in front of St. Olaf's Church, right here in Old Town, Tallinn. Now this used to be the center of Tallinn Old Town back in the day, and it was actually built, they say, in the 12th century, so early 1200s, and it was dedicated to King Olaf II of Norway. Whoop whoop. <laughs> I'm half Norwegian myself, so a little bit proud there. And then it was taken over in 1219 when the Danes came and took over. Estonia. So what we're gonna do is go inside. They're kind of doing some reworking on the outside. We're gonna try our best to see what's inside. It's closing quite shortly, so I'm kind of rushing to go inside now. So let's check out St. Olaf's Church in Tallinn. up 123.7 meters of that spiral staircase the second one for today so I've burned so many calories I know it so I've got a lot of space for some nice Estonian food later this is the top of St. Olaf's Church 360 degree panoramic views from the top of here it's absolutely beautiful the weather's beautiful the sun's out hardly any clouds in sight 
I think you can see a really beautiful sunset from up here, but unfortunately this closes at 6 p.m. and the sunset tonight's at 11 p.m. So maybe if you come towards the end of summer when the sun starts setting a bit earlier, then come up here and you'll be able to see a great view from St. Olaf's Church of the entire Tallinn city. Let's take in the breathtaking views from up here at St. Olaf's Church. This is Town Hall Square and this is the main square or the central part of Tallinn Old City now. You saw earlier they had a lot of markets for the tourists to buy kind of trinkets and souvenirs and local garments and utensils. So it's actually a really nice place. I'm not sure if it's only on weekends or only when a cruise ship is coming in when they set it up, but it was absolutely buzzing earlier. On the outskirts of the square, you'll see all the restaurants which have local food. Now around here, it's pretty Pretty much the touristy types of food so I'm telling you now it's gonna be double triple the price of what you can get outside of Old City but nonetheless you're assured that you're gonna be getting the most local Estonian types of dishes there. Town Hall is right behind me it's a huge building with a little man on top so if you have a look closely you'll see a little man on top wearing a hat. Let's take a look around we're gonna look for somewhere to eat too and hopefully get some nice Estonian grub too. <laughs> Ratavskayevu 16, it's one of the most popular local hotspots, restaurant spots for both locals and for tourists. So that's why I really wanted to come down here and try some good Estonian food. So I think we're going to start off with a selection of Estonian cheeses, followed by the braised elk roast antelope, so they call antelope for deer. I'm curious to see what that's going to taste like. The prices here are pretty reasonable, and also I have asked for a really nice local cocktail. So we'll see what they bring. I'm super excited. I'm so hungry after all the walking and sightseeing today, so I can't wait to get some good quality Estonian food right here in Rataskevu 16. So once again, I asked for a recommendation of something local to drink. So what they've done is they've given me a gin and tonic, but not just a regular gin tonic. It's with Estonian gin, and it's got grapefruit. I'm not too much of a fan of GNT, but I did want to try it, and this is their specialty here in this restaurant. So let's give it a whirl. You know what? I think this has been this GNT. Such a warm, warm day today and after all this walking. This is super refreshing. Great. 
Wow, this is pretty amazing. Um, that malt bread, I've never had it before, but it's super soft, super spongy. It's really, really good with the homemade butter that I had with it. But these cheeses are absolutely beautiful. I've got to tell you that there is actually a truffle cheese right here, and that truffle flavor really, really pulls through. My favorite's a smoked cheese right here in the corner. Actually, I don't mind all of them. They're not sharp, they're not too sharp, which I like. And you can tell that it's been made with really good, good ingredients that's been farmed here locally. You can just tell by the smoothness, the richness of the cheese. But definitely give it a try if you're coming here as a starter. It's only going to whet your appetite for my main course coming up now. So let me finish up or have as much of the cheese as I can before we get our elk main course. So let's dive right into our um, roasted elk. Let's see. So this is going to be my first time to try elk. And I don't really know what to expect. It's a uh, gamey meat. But I think it's going to be masked by the sauce anyway. So let's try it. Okay. That gamey texture. It's really hard to explain any game animal when you're eating it. It's just got a different taste. It's like it's the consistency. I'm not quite sure how to explain it, but it does have a bit of an aftertaste. But I really don't mind it. The sauce, the black currant sauce that's on top of this elk meat is beautiful. I'm sure it goes amazing with the cauliflower puree too. It's gonna even that because this is a very strong flavor. I mean, I can't say that it's like any other meat like beef or pork or lamb. Almost like a lamb slash beef consistency, but there's a different taste and you have to try it for yourself. And this is what this vlog is all about, me trying new things, tasting new things and tasting it for you. You can have an idea of what this food tastes like. So deal or elk? So far, I like it. I'm gonna eat it. I'm super hungry. I'll have a chat to you later and talk about my final thoughts about Tallinn Estonia. So I'm gonna get back to my main course, my roasted elk, and hopefully get full and walk back to the hotel. So I'll see you then. <laughs> Okay guys, so before we get into my final thoughts about Tallinn, Estonia, I just want to quickly show you my Fitbit for my final step count. I know that sometimes you guys are a bit interested and I did do a lot of walking today up and down spiral staircases twice and walking around the perimeter of the old city. So let me just show you quickly. Okay, so we did 16,351 steps, which is a really good feat considering Fitbits are usually targeting 8,000 a day. If you follow my itinerary of what I did throughout the day in Tallinn, then you'll be hitting that and maybe even hit 20,000, which is my usual target anyway for my walking count. Today, I decided to only check out the major sightseeing places. And if you're wondering why I missed out a few things here and there, and if you are from Tallinn, then do hit the comment box below and share some more tips with the community of what we can do in Tallinn. But the places I went to were the places I personally wanted to go to, and they were the most popular and famous places that were suggested on my walking tour this morning. Some of the museums that you can go to is the Maritime Museum, there's a KGB Museum, 
There's heaps of art galleries you can go to. However, a lot of the ones that I was researching, there's even a dollhouse museum. They weren't museums that I was particularly interested in. Sorry that I didn't go inside them, but I didn't want to waste too much time because a lot of things were closing around 5, 6 or 7 p.m. and I had a lot of things to cram in. And on top of that, as I mentioned earlier, there were a lot of cruise ships that came into port and dumped up to 6,000 people all into Old Town. So I wanted them to all clear out. So most of my sightseeing only started about 3 p.m. this afternoon. So I really had to cram everything in because a lot of the churches and viewpoints that I was going to closed at 6 p.m. Don't think that you should only spend a day here. Two, even three days maximum is what you need in Tallinn to really explore it and immerse yourself in the culture and the people. But if you just want a crash course on what you can do, then please follow what I did today because those were the major things that you can do in Tallinn. So my final thoughts about Tallinn, Estonia. Well, first of all, I love this city and I love the people here. They're super friendly and they really, really remind me a little bit of the Scandinavian culture. I am half Norwegian and I actually just called my mom this morning on Facebook and I told her, it's kind of weird because I'm expecting so much of a Soviet country because it is ex-Soviet Union. But what came was a more Scandinavian or Nordic country, which was a very pleasant surprise. At the restaurant, I had dinner. Super, super nice. They're really trying their best to tell me what was the most Estonian food that I could have on that menu, which was really, really nice of them too. Secondly, Old Town. I know I mentioned yesterday that Estonia is rather inexpensive, and it is, especially compared to Latvia and Lithuania. All three of them are quite inexpensive compared to other EU countries. However, in the old city, everything is expensive. It's the complete opposite. I know that they're trying to take advantage of the tourism culture and earn as much as they can from tourists, which is fine. It's a business. But if you are on a bit of a budget, then I suggest to not eat in the old city area because all the prices for food there are two or three times even more than what you would get anywhere out of the old city. For example, my dinner was 40 euros. That was one drink, a starter and a main. And that was just for me. And usually for that price that's even for three people you could probably eat normally do be mindful of that that the old city is targeted for tourists and if you want to save a bit more money then make sure that you eat and drink outside of the old city what i also love about Tallinn is everything is walking distance to each other the old city is not that big. It's one of the smallest old cities and old cities back in the day in the 12, 13 and even 1400s were specifically made to be in such a compact state and then they build a wall around it for the security. That's what I loved about Tallinn is I could walk everywhere within 5, 10, 15 minutes and see all the sites tick, 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 <laughs> which was a lot easier for me. Tallinn, I really, really liked it and I was so happy that the sun was out today. I was a bit worried yesterday because it was super cloudy. I do hope that this vlog helped you, especially if you're still on the fence, if you're going to put Tallinn on your European tour. But if you are going to go to any of the Baltic countries, do all three of them. And you can even add these three countries if you're going to visit Scandinavia, because it's not going to break your budget by passing through these three countries, especially if you travel by bus or even by ship too. It's not, it's not that expensive. Tomorrow, I'll be bringing you to Helsinki in Finland. We're going to take the fast ferry, which is two and a half hours from Tallinn to Helsinki. I just booked my ticket and I'm super excited. <laughs> to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, share it with your friends if they're also wondering about what to do in Tallinn or you just want to show them what Estonia is like, and that's a cool idea too. Head over to my channel if you like these types of travel vlogs. I do travel around the world a lot, it's part of my job, and a lot of my vlogs do focus on things you can do in one day or two days in a specific city, so do head over and check that out. There might be a city that you're heading to and I can give you some tips there too. Social media. Media. I'm more active on Instagram, so if you do want to keep in touch with me, check out my Instagram. It's Tom Sylvester, one word. I do a lot of polls there and I do ask a lot of questions regarding my vlogs and what I should do in my next vlog. So I hope to see you there. So anyway, tomorrow is going to be episode seven. I can't believe it's already the seventh episode. I felt like I was just doing episode one yesterday. But anyway, it's coming to a close. It's our last city and last country in this 10 days and four countries mini tour of the Baltics and Finland. Do stay tuned for that 
that. And if you missed out my other episode, there's a link popping up on your screen now. Check out episodes one to five. I'm gonna try and get to bed now. I know that it's still bright outside, which is really weird to me. But in the meantime, always take care. Thanks for watching and I will see you in tomorrow's vlog.